Hi everybody, welcome to Monday Morning Man. We're going to be continuing our Living the Word series. But before we begin, I'd like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody watching this continues to grow in you, Lord. Their understanding of you, what you want from them, how you want them to apply the word to their lives in order to continue to grow. So they understand that growing is a process, continual process. That includes repentance, reading, studying, and applying the word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, let's open up our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. So let's continue on in 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 10 through 15. That's 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 10 through 15. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call an election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. So as believers, we have the Holy Spirit. And the more that we learn about God and Jesus and their character and their precepts, the more God's grace over us increases and the more our peace increases. Why? Because we're secure in our um, Christian identity, okay? And we also need to be focused on continuing to grow in the Lord. And the way that you do that is by praying and reading, applying the word of God to your life, okay? So first of all, of course, like I said before, you need to be repentant. You need to have a repentant heart. You need to be repenting every night, every day. Anytime you sin, repent. And you're going to know because the Holy Spirit is going to convict you. Okay? And then in order to apply the word, like I said in my last teaching, you pray before you open the Bible. You open the Bible to the scripture that you would like to read. You read it, you take down your observations, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, the how. And then you start to ask yourself, after reading this, how does this apply to me? What do I need to change? What do I need to repent of? What is my purpose? What career do I need to take on? Should I be an evangelist? Am I just a kingdom ambassador? Which one is it? You know, what is my purpose and how am I supposed to steward this? And you can get all those answers by reading the word of God. And that also shows growth because those are the things that you should be focused on, especially as a new believer. And then if you're somebody who is, um, who has already been doing that and is a believer, has been a believer for a long time, then you focus on how to sharpen those skills. If you're like an evangelist, you focus on how to be an even better evangelist. If you're a prophet or a prophetess, you focus on how to be an even better one, how to grow in that spiritual gift. These are all, that is the benefit of, of, you know, spiritual growth 
is that it can take you to that level. You should never want to be stagnant. And also what comes with spiritual growth is, you know, you're going to be virtuous. Okay. And that virtue that you have, that high moral standard that you have is God's. So you'll see that you'll be cursing less. You won't engage in recreational drugs like you were before you were saved. Okay. You're, you're not, um, being idolatrous or getting into hyper patriotism or going into rabbit holes that you shouldn't be going into and deceiving others in the same fashion, pushing them towards anxiety, confusion, and depression. Oh, he sees all that. And then when you, when you receive spiritual attacks, just know it's because of something that you did that could have been avoided. Okay. So your virtue should be increasing. And then also your knowledge increases your knowledge of God, his precepts, because you've been applying that to your life. So your knowledge of him grows to the point where you don't necessarily have to memorize scripture or, or memorize, you know, memorize any kind of scripture to bring somebody into the body of Christ or memorize it at all because it's in your heart because you've been applying it. Okay. That's, that's why application is so important. And then you also exhibit self-control. You don't fly off the handle. You don't have debates with non-believers on Christ. He never told us to do that. You don't have debates with believers, okay? And you don't use your knowledge of the word as a tool for self-righteousness or to push you towards something like Gnosticism and going again into rabbit holes. That shows growth. When you can put those things away or notice like, you know what? This page that I'm looking at is pushing me towards being hyper patriotic, which is idolatry. I'm talking about that. I'm not talking about loving your country. We should all love our country, you know, but if this page is pushing me towards that, I should unfollow it. That is the sign of growth. That right there is a sign of growth. I'm not saying that that means that, oh, you're, you're going to stop there. No, you're going to continue to grow from that. And God loves to see things like that. That is bearing fruit. Okay, and then we also have to persevere in the faith. No matter what trials, tribulations, issues that we're facing, we must persevere. We can't sit there and blame God for it. We have to continue to stay in the faith and stay faithful to the Lord. Pray to him. Pray, ask him for help and he'll help you. You know, if you're, if you see that you f fell back into sin, a sin that you, that you know, that you've moved away from, ask him for help for that. If you lost your job or something, ask him for help. Because here's the thing, your victory in overcoming that is also another testimony. Even though you've been Christian for some time, that's still another testimony that can help somebody else in the body of Christ or bring other people into the body of Christ. Your testimony is not just your first one. It's an ongoing thing and it's supernatural. So, and, and that is a blessing in and of itself. Okay, and then you want to show brotherly love, okay, that, you know, you love the brethren. And yes, love can be shown through a rebuke, but you have to make sure that you study to show yourself approved because there's a way to lovingly do it that will get the person to move away from that sin and continue to grow in their relationship with God and grow in their godliness and their holiness. And when you do all these things, of course, you're going to bear good fruit, okay? And you're going to be stumbling less and less. And that's the point. When the people who don't do these things, you'll notice. You'll be able to tell after this teaching. Because there's going to be some pages that you will unfollow. Okay? They're, they're stagnant. They haven't changed since last year or two years ago. Okay? Or they're even worse. They're even waxing worse and worse to the point where their pages have become so dark. The content that they produce have become so dark because their mind is darkened, because now they're spiritually blind. Their mind is darkened, their eyes are darkened, okay? Their, their discernment is off. So you wanna make sure that you're continuing to focus on growth in the Lord, whether you're a new believer or you've been a believer for five years or more, you should be continuing to grow. If you're a, a teacher, you continue to grow in your teachings and how you teach and everything. Okay, if you're um, a new believer, you should continue to be growing towards, you know, finding out what your purpose is, bringing people into the body of Christ the correct way, in, 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 a, in a way that's not self-righteous. You know, that's also a sign of growth. 
So we should be focusing on growth as much as possible and our sanctification process until death. And we always want to make sure that we do that because then we're an example. We're living the gospel. Sometimes, you know, people come into the body of Christ just by looking at you. You don't have to say a word because your behavior shows everything. That you don't even have to say but two words, oh, it's Jesus. There you go. That person now wants to be in the body of Christ because they see the fruit. They see the fruit of, of, of your faith, of your belief in God. And it's important to note that Peter actually uh, was giving this instruction before he died. He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to die. And, 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 you know, he gave this information out. And now we have that and we still have to follow it to this day. And I'm telling you, if you do all these things, you will continue to grow. And that should be your number one concern as a Christian. So continue to submit and commit to the Lord and ask the Lord what needs to change in order to get to my next level of growth, no matter what that level is. You could be new to the body of Christ, a year in, 10 years in, whatever that is, ask him to show you. And if there's anything that you're struggling with, any sin that you're struggling with, ask the Lord to remove that desire from you and he will do it. You have to have the faith to believe that he'll do it though. Okay, I know that for a lot of new believers, it has been so difficult uh, during 2020 and 2021 because a lot of pastors have pushed you in the wrong direction. They didn't have you focus on your discipleship process and, and your transformation. Okay, so I am going to do a part three, maybe even a part four on this. Okay, I, I, I will. But before that, um, next week, Tuesday, we will be continuing our discussion on divine healing and healthcare. So definitely join us for that. Thank you and have a blessed week.